Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're at King Edward Mine. If you pay a visit to King Edward Mine you can expect to see a museum all about its history, which is where we are at the moment. There are some great examples of the old mining machinery used over the centuries, which we're going to have a look at later. Hope you really enjoy looking at it. We've got our, my mum is actually guiding us today, which is wonderful. So enjoy. King Edward Mine is south of Camborne. Going on a tour of King Edward Mine. Where do we start? In the boiler house for the shaft, which is King Shaft. Brilliant. So this building is the Boiler House. It was built in 1906 by the Campbell School of Mines. The Campbell School of Mines wanted somewhere where they could come and utilise a building and bring all their students together so that they could graduate in course of excellence in mining. Oh, I've got to do this, look. <laughs> Pick up a pasty and speak to a dog coat and maiden in 1870. Oh, it's gorgeous. They've got children reading her words. So the museum itself is in the boiler house. A boiler similar to this would have been in there, producing the steam to run the beam engine. So this is the actual beam that came off that engine house. And the volunteers are hoping to get this all back in working order. Let me show you the shaft that was here, and nobody knew about it because it was capped. Ah. With, when it was made obsolete due to the drop in tin prices, they put wooden planks across it. Vegetation <laughs> grew up. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> yeah, and nobody knew it was here. Until it collapsed. Oh dear. <laughs> so, just to clarify, this is where the shaft was. The shaft would have gone deep underground, 400 feet. And off over here, you would have expected an engine house. Seems really bizarre to think you'd be hanging on here as you've rattled your way underground, four of you in here, in the dark. We're now going into the winder house. So in the winder house you'll find something truly fantastic. It's got quite a checkered history. When the mine shut, when Wheel Grenville flooded, it then went down to Paul Dark Mine. Volunteers got the engine back from Paul Dark Mine. Started to put it together. Fitted exactly. <gasps> this is the original concrete base that this was on when that mine was working with this. So that fits over yeah. that shaft out there? Yeah. Oh, how fluky is that? Lunchtime. ID tags for the Possib miners. Yeah, those are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they gave one to the person at the top, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, and then one, and and one, one. So that you would then know how many men had gone down according yeah. to the tag, you pick them up, you then... And if there was an accident, they knew they were looking for... for we're we going through there. Yes, we are. Mill entrance. Please wait here for a tour guide. Thank you. Steep steps. They are quite steep actually. They're narrow too, aren't they? Actual California stamps was in the Paris exhibition, was brought and bought here, and that's the original stamps. Wow. And they were more efficient than the Cornish yeah. ones. They all weigh the same. They all go up and down the same. So if one wore, yes. you had to stop the whole proceedings to replace it. But the California stamps were not made like that. The head on the California stamps is slightly off. So as they go up and down, the wear is not in one place. What have you got? <laughs> well, that's granite. And that looks more like a rock that would have multiple ores, so I would go with that one. This is amazing, there's so much original stuff here, and it's all working, it's great. Oh, wow. It would oh, it's go got buckets in Oh, yeah, buckets would pick up the slime. I can hear water behind me. Yeah, you will in a minute. Look! Yeah, it's coming through here. Oh, I see. So That's it's coming, coming along the buckets, buckets, yeah. Along to here, into there. That's amazing, isn't it? 
and the, these rills that you see in dressing floors were to, to recirculate the water. the water and the tin so it went through the process you would have a manager assessing the tin all the time until he got as much as he could possibly get out of it yeah we have two boys yes this was full of powder and water slime each boy the other side 100 hits per minute 50 <gasps> each doing this tin ore going to go up to be smelted ingot of tin oh yeah 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 this is over a hundred years old. Bottom of the sea off the lizard, you will find these. Oh, don't look. <laughs> so it's a Cornish round frame. The only one I'm not, the only one that works in the world. Really? Only example in the world. Who had this man? Uncle Willie. He only tin spoons for trees, and this is Ooh. what was there. Oh, this is what's making the noise yeah. in the background. It's worked by gravity. It goes in the laundry, gets washed through. So you're actually washing the tin out that's come from the mine. This is its last little trip. It'll fill up the reservoir, bring that down. Tin stays behind. Rubbish gets deposited in here. Oh, wow. Yes. Being iron oxide died. Whoa. And there you go. <laughs> So this is what this this is tin streaming, very similar to what the Romans did, very similar to how it was up until the 16th century when they changed and went underground. Mm. I've got a book on Tudor mining, which really goes into Stanry law and, and how they were exempt from an awful lot of things, and they did a lot of things but got away with it. Good old Cornish. follow this little trail designed by the King Edward Mine Museum. So we're going to start here at the King Edward Mine Museum entrance, follow the numbered route. The numbers correspond to the information on the reverse of the leaflet. So we're going to take a left around the back of the cafe, the Kraust Hut. Let's go and find number one, South Condoro Stamps, erected in 1869. This engine eventually drove 80 heads of Cornish stamps. Stamps were used to crush the ore before treatment. After the mine closed in 1902, the stamps and dressing machinery were sold to the company, then reopening Great Condoro Mine to the north of here. The number four, this is a junction shaft. A shallow shaft of about 300 feet would have been used with a horse whim for winding. Number five, so what's this then, sir? This is the pool that collected water for all the dressing floor. So this whole area that we're stood in now is a man-made reservoir for water and there's kind of a wall all the way around. Now looking for the explosives magazine. I guess they would have kept it away from the mine because they wouldn't want it all being exploded accidentally, would they? I think it's in there. What? The big bang place. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> the explosives yeah, magazine. That, that thing. <laughs> Number seven. It's where the no smoking signs are. These markers are excellent and define your path. Just follow them and you won't go wrong. Viewing point. Brilliant view. It's a stack up there, isn't there? You can see the monument on Cambrai from here. Yeah, with King Edward Mine in front. You've got Marriott's and Francis shafts there, haven't you? Fortescue shaft in the foreground. There's another mine shaft over there. Mine oh my shafts. goodness, there is, isn't yeah. there? They're everywhere. Yeah. Two a penny. So although this has brought us back to the start, we're not finished yet, it's a kind of figure of eight. I was just thinking, Sarah. Yeah? This place is really great. <laughs> and rolling on, we're now going to pass in front of the museum. There's Camborne. Big old chunk of granite on there. Now heading off to number 14, the Settling Pits. We just crossed over the road. Post number 14 to indicate this is the settling pits. It's a bit overgrown. Not quite sure how this bit would have worked. Let's have a look at the leaflet. Okay, there's a picture indicating the settling tanks. They're there to just collect the final bits of tin. So now heading down to those two mine buildings, the actual engine houses themselves. 
Fortescue shaft. Very peaceful on an evening like this, a far cry from what it would have been like 150 years ago I'm sure with all the stamps going and the winding house and the steam engines and the boilers would have been a different story then. So that massive engine house back there was used to pump the mine clean of water. The plaque here says Wheel Grenville Fortescue Shaft Winding Engine House built in 1892. So the winding house would have brought the ore out of the ground and it would have let the men go down and bring them back up again. So I hope you've enjoyed our little tour of the King Edward mine. It's quite special to have something like this with unique parts of the equipment still working. Some examples, only ones in the world. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a fascinating insight into what went on with Cornwall's mining heritage and history. Yes. If you're in the area, you're into mining and you want to discover a bit more about Cornwall's history, it's well worth a visit. And find a tour guide, they're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>